Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on removing satellite trails from your Deep Sky CCD images. Now, it's an unfortunate fact that with more and more satellites being launched into orbit, we will find more satellite trails on our images. This is a particularly bad example on the screen. I was quite unlucky because this image is actually made up of just three 10 minute exposures. And during the course of those exposures, I've picked up six satellite trails. Now I should point out this is very unusual if you're imaging with a telescope live system. It's very rare to get something like this, but it can happen. And this was very high quality data that I didn't really want to discard and then rebook the time on the telescope. So I've dug a little bit deeper and, and figured out um, a technique that we can use to, to help minimize these satellite trails. Now I usually take a two-pronged approach when dealing with these. The, the first course of action is always to try and minimize the strength of the satellite trails during the stacking process. And I can give you an example of how that works before we come back to Affinity to do more cosmetic corrections. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use Maxim DL. It's a program I've been using for a long time now, actually when I'm taking images from my home observatory, but also for calibrating and stacking telescope live images as well. Programs like PixInsight are equally as good. Deep Sky Stacker works very well. There's lots of other programs you can use, but I'll, I'll demonstrate this technique in Maxim because it's quite straightforward to do. So the first thing we're going to do is just click on the stack button here, and we're going to add the three files or three luminance frames into um, a stacking menu. Now here's the three images and we can do a quick assessment of the quality of these just clicking on the quality button. Click measure all. It doesn't take too long to do this and Maxim will just assign uh, a rating system to the three images to confirm which are the best ones. Um, this one, for example, as you can see in terms of image rank, one of three, and roundness one of three, this is the best image of the three, and this is the one I would normally use as a reference frame. But this is the one that's got some fairly grim satellite trails on it. The third image also has a couple of sat or three satellite trails on there, so again, we wouldn't really use this as our reference image, but the middle one seems to be clear of satellite trails and this is really good so this is the one we'll use as our reference frame and to do that I just right click on that image and then come down to reference image let's put a little tag on there to let me know that this is the one that Maxim will use as a, as a reference image we come across to choose our alignment method that's fine and combine we generally use either SD mask or Sigma clip as these are the techniques that Maxim will apply to remove the satellite trials. It does that by using our reference frame, which is visible on the left of the screen there, as the reference. And if it detects the satellite trails in the other images, which it will, it'll do its best to kind of reject them from the stack and fill in where the satellite trails were with an average of, of nearby pixel values. And it's a very strong technique. So once we're happy with everything here, we click go, and it should only just take a few moments just to uh, stack this into a, a three image stack, hopefully with uh, vastly reduced satellite trails. Okay, so that's done. We can close this down, just shrink this down a little bit. And initially you can see that the image looks quite good. Um, it's done a fairly good job. I can scale this very aggressively and we should see some of these trails. There is a kind of hint of them in the image. This is as I say, scaled very aggressively. We would never scale it this heavily um, during the image processing stage, but by showing it like this, you can see there's a residual amount of the satellite trails left, but it's a huge improvement. If we go back to, to viewing this at a sensible scale, um, it's looking quite good. So what I would normally do then is save this image as a 16-bit TIFF and then incorporate it into either Photoshop or, as, as we'll see today, Affinity Photo. So that's it, we're done with Maxim. But as I say, that can be done as well in PixInsight or uh, Deep Sky Stack or many of the other programs. So we'll now switch to Affinity and this version of the image is where I've just stacked it without the Sigma Reject uh, tool being applied. So you can see six of the satellite trails in all their glory. This is Affinity Photo, so it's a very good program if you don't use Pix Insight or any of those other programs I mentioned earlier on, you can actually stack your 32-bit uh, FITS files or 16-bit FITS files 
in Affinity now. It has that capability, but it's also got some very good tools for cosmetically correcting satellite trails like we see here on the screen. Now, the first thing I always recommend you do before starting on the cosmetic correction is to uh, create a duplicate layer of the image. And we do that by coming up to layer and then just scroll down to duplicate. And now we have a floating layer, which is the exact copy of the background layer. And I'm actually going to rename these now because it will make our life a little bit easier if we can keep track of which one's which. So because we'll be doing all of the cosmetic corrections on this floating layer, I'm going to click in here and just call it corrected. That's it. And we'll be using the base layer as a, what I'll call a reality check. So we can refer back to it after we've actually made all the corrections to see if there's any errors that have been introduced or any corrections we have to make to, to save those errors creeping in. So I'm going to call this uh, reality check because that's exactly what it will be. But for now, both of these layers are identical. And all of the corrections that we need to make now using a variety of tools will be made on this floating layer. So we can start off by creating a selection around the satellite trials. Now I won't do it to all of them just to save time, but I'll do it to two or three to give you an idea of the technique. So the first thing we need to do is just drag the image over to the left hand side of the screen. If you need to move the image around, you can click on the space bar. The icon on the screen turns into a hand and you can just click on the image and, and move it around. And that's fine. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to create a custom box around this first satellite trail. And we use the pen tool to do this. So click on there. And the idea is we create four marker points around the satellite trail. Scroll across the image, two more over here, and then scroll back to close this box. And then once we've done that, we can come up to the selection button here, and this will turn the box into an actual selection. And we know it's a selection because we see the familiar marching ants on the screen. And this is just telling Affinity that the correction we're about to apply should only be done to the area within the boundary of the marching ants. Now I recommend you get the actual selection fairly close to the satellite trail. If you expand it too much, some errors will creep in from these stars that are around the, uh, the actual selection. So once you've got the, the boundary marked nicely, you just come up to the next tool above the pen tool, which is the in painting brush tool. Now, as I come onto the screen with that tool, you can see the size of the brush that I'm using. And this is perfect for actually encompassing the marching ants selection. If you need to enlarge or reduce that brush size, you can use the left or right brackets keys on the keyboard, but this is a perfect size. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. So with the in painting brush selected, click on the start of the selection and just move it all the way across. And you can see that behind the brush circle, Affinity is filling this in with grey. This is just to alert us to the fact that we're applying the in-painting brush tool to the selection. So we go right the way across, we'll get to the end, let go, a little box will come up just to tell you that the in-painting brush is doing its stuff and then it's applied this correction. So basically what it's doing, it's looking at the pixel values around the selection and it's filling in the selection using the same sorts of values. And initially it looks like it's done a very, very good job. If I delete this selection, just doing Control D, you could look at this image now, and you know, there's no lines of demarcation or anything on the image, so it's, it's done a very, very good job. But it's possible it has introduced some artifacts, so we'll come back to that idea in just a minute. For now, I'll apply the same technique to the second trail here. It's exactly the same as we did before, so back to the pen tool, our four marker points, one, two, scroll across, three, four, back to the image, close the boundary, up to the selection tool, here's our marching ants, just shrink that down a bit, back to the in-painting brush tool, and then just drag all the way across. It doesn't matter if we're crossing these other satellite trails, by the way, we can deal with that in a minute. Let go and the in painting brush tool will do its job again. 
Okay, so far so good. We can deselect that. And already the image is looking quite good. If I hide the corrected layer, there they are. They're still there on the base layer. But for now, we've got rid of them. I'm going to do this one more time, just on the part of the image here, because technically this could be quite challenging. We've got a lot of variation across this part of the image with the, the fainter nebulosity, the dark nebula in these sort of rifts, the bright nebula in the middle, and then the opposite as we come out. So I'll do one more selection on this image. We can just do one, two, three, four. Close the boundary, call up the selection, in painting tool, and just come down here and let's see how it gets on with this bit. Delete the selection, and again, it's done a very creditable job. So even without applying any further corrections, you can see that this technique does work very well. So far, so good. But it's at this point we need to come back to our reality check layer. So here's the, where we came in. We've got our, our three satellite trials. They've come back. Now, because we have this two layer structure, we can call upon Affinity Photo's eraser tool in a very nice way to check for errors. So the eraser brush tool is just up here. We can click on this. We've got a brush size selected, but again, using the, um, the right and left arrow keys, I'm going to enlarge that just for now. And with the top layer selected, if you come across with the eraser brush tool and then come down, you can see it's giving us a little view of the base layer. As I scroll along, we can see as if we're looking through a kind of porthole from the top layer to the second layer. And we can use this as a way of checking for errors. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And also bear in mind that if you stop moving, the preview through the porthole only stays on screen for a couple of seconds before it disappears. But we can just call that back again by um, scrolling along the satellite tron. This is a very interesting way of assessing what Affinity's done to um, the correction of the image. In fact, what you can see here is that when we view through the top layer to the base layer, there's an anomaly there. We can see that the top layer has this star in it, but by viewing to the, the reality check layer below, that star shouldn't be there. So we know that this star here, just above the selection, is actually a, an erroneous star. So the way we deal with that is just to use Affinity's clone tool. We know this is, is wrong, this star, but we can come across to the inpainting brush, and if we click on that, and then come across the first option we come to is the healing brush tool. There's a set of, of different tools sort of nested within this, this one icon on the left hand side. So we change to the healing brush tool and we know this star here is wrong. We select a brush size that encompasses the star, so something like that's good. Move the cursor to an area of the sky that's fairly bland, that doesn't have, uh, it's just background sky. Click the Alt key on the keyboard and click on the image and that's put across on there which is our reference point this is where we'll be kind of cloning from to to remove the star so it's just back to the star and we're getting a preview of what affinity is going to do to it and just a few clicks like this and that that erroneous star has now gone from the stack if i hide the top stack you can see that the star isn't there at all but there are other issues here so for now, I'm going to change back to the eraser tool. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So we can once again come along this, uh, this line and look for problems within the image. Now here, for example, we can see that there's the satellite trail is there. This is our reality check layer that we can see. And there's also a star there just below it. But as I come across from there, you can see that star disappear. So basically what's happened, the um, sort of cosmetic correction tool that Affinity has applied has accidentally erased that star as well. So what we can do, because we're actually using the eraser tool on the image, we can shrink the brush size down so that it encompasses just the star itself. And if I click on this a few times, we're erasing the corrected layer, the floating layer, 
using the eraser tool, so we're effectively seeing through that image to the base layer below. And we can see that we've now brought that star back into line. So as I hide the corrected layer, there's that star. When I bring it back, we've now got it in the image. In fact, you might be able to see as I do that, that there's actually another pair of erroneous stars here. So what we can do, again, we can use the, um, the eraser tool to see through to these. So we know they're, they're erroneous. And again, once, as we did before, we can click on the corrected layer, come across to the clone tool, and then just clone these two out as well. It seems a little bit laborious, but it's definitely worth doing this to keep as much of the original data in there. So we're doing a fairly good job. There will be other er errors creeping in and you can use the brush mechanism with the top layer selected. We can just sort of scroll across and look for any sort of glaring errors. You know, we shouldn't expect to have to correct every single erroneous star in the image. That would take hours and hours to do. But you can use this technique to, in fact, there's one here as well. You can see there's an erroneous um, star that's been removed from the top layer, but it's actually there because we can see through to the base layer. And again, we could just use the eraser tool to, to correct that. Uh, and you can see on the base layer, that star isn't actually there. So we would have to correct that as well on the top layer. So let's just do that as we're, we're scrolling across. We're going to use a nice small correction here just to replace that as best we can. That, that'll do for now. Yeah, you can see it's gone. It's, it's a little bit bright because the clone tool's picked up a little bit, or the, the healing brush tool's picked up a little bit from this satellite trail. We could actually use Affinity's clone tool um, to do that a little bit better. In fact, we remove the satellite trail as well. That, this is all okay. And then back to the eraser tool and we can come across here. Yeah, that's looking good. We're gonna have a quick look uh, just before we finish at this one along here. Yeah, there's a few sort of errors that have been introduced in there, but you can apply this technique to all of this. You should expect to spend um, a little while doing this, but with care, you can remove the worst of the, the satellite trails. You can fix the most glaring of all the errors and um, happily you can recover your data. So I hope this has made sense to you. It's looked through the tutorial a few times to get used to the, the idea of using these different brushes and uh, particularly the corrected and reality check layers. This will make your life a little bit easier. And happily, uh, once you've done a good job on this, you can actually save your data to produce a really good image. If you've applied these techniques and corrected most of the problems in the remove the satellite trails, you can end up with a really good image out of data that was degraded quite heavily by the satellite. So if we can just have a quick look at the end result, um, here it is. At this kind of scale, there doesn't appear to be much sign of the satellite trails. If you zoom in a little bit closer, there's a hint of them in there, but that's kind of acceptable, I think. The important thing is we've saved those two affected sub-exposures and been able to produce a nice image at the end of the day. So I hope this works. If if you get any satellite trails and bear in mind that you won't get them as bad as this I don't think you, you may find just the odd satellite trail if you use the stacking procedure that should minimize the worst of it and you can just apply this technique to remove the rest of them that's it I'll see you in the next tutorial